Hello everyone. I wanted to make a quick little recording to go over what we went through last week in class. I know a lot of friends had to miss due to testing, and so I thought making a recording might be easier than having to watch through the class recordings. As we know, there's a lot of questions happening and interruptions. So let's go ahead and talk about the engineering design process. So we have a new section on our class website here. And if you come down, you'll see that there is a presentation. There's a link here to the presentation. And here is a place for you to post for what we're calling the paper chair challenge. But I'm going to start with going through the engineering design process first for you to get a feel for these steps. So first, I want to tell you this is not something that you're going to have to memorize. It is always going to be provided to you. I just want to go over it to make sure you understand what each of the steps is really about. The engineering design process is what we're going to be using to work through problems that we come up with this year in order to complete our projects. Engineers are really focused on solving problems and making things better. And so we are looking at different situations as if we were an engineer. And this is the way that real engineers work through problems as well. So you can also see that this process is what is called a cycle, meaning it doesn't have a beginning or an end. And if you look at the arrows and follow them, it could just keep going on and on and on forever. For our purposes in class, because we don't want to spend the entire year talking about the same topic, we are going to have a start, beginning, and end point. Where we're going to begin is with this first bubble here with the question mark that says ask. We are going to begin by asking a question. This question is going to be about how we can fix something, make something better. It's going to have that engineering focus. And when we ask a question in class, because we all want to be focused on the same thing, we are going to either do this step all together, or I will do this step for you to give you the focus point for our topic. So you won't be asking your own question. We will ask a question together as a class and then work through the rest of the process. The next step here is to imagine. And when you imagine something, you're thinking about something and you're picturing it, and it might be something that doesn't exist or doesn't exist yet. And so this is the stage where we think about how we might answer the question that we asked in the previous step. You can think of and imagine different solutions. Uh, they don't have to be ones that could really happen necessarily. They don't have to be the easiest ones, just everything you can think of to solve that problem. After imagining, we're going to plan. When we go to planning, we go from thinking big to thinking small. So when we're imagining, we're thinking about the whole big picture. When we're planning, we get down to details where we're making lists of materials that we need. We're thinking about if we would need help with this project, what kind of space we need. Um, we might be sketching out what this thing is going to look like. So. Thinking, going big imagining to small planning is how we are going to move through getting ready to move on to our next step, which is to create. Creating is going to look a couple of different ways in this class. For one thing, sometimes the things that we are talking about are not going to be possible to create the real life thing. For example, we are going to have an architecture unit and architecture is about buildings. So you're obviously not going to build a building that you have designed, but we're going to make a small version of that building. The same might be true for other projects, um, even the paper chair challenge, where you might be making a mini chair rather than a large chair. And then also you might have to get creative with how you create, depending on what materials you have, what the project is, all of those different things. So if you have a bunch of craft materials or recycle materials that you want to use, great. You can use that and make 3D models. Maybe you don't have those items and it would be better for you to create a sketch. Maybe you want to make a digital sketch. We will also be doing 3D modeling on the computer with Tinkercad this year, which is super exciting. So there's going to be lots of different things that we do in this create step. It probably won't look the same for any of your projects. After we have created, oops. We are going to work to improve or make it better. It doesn't have to be bad to make it better. And then finally, we, we are going to share so that we get a chance to show our classmates what we have been working on, uh, show it to me, and talk through our ideas. And we'll share in a lot of different ways too. So that is the process. Just to give you an idea, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to explain.